Oh, hello. Now it's time to break down UFC Vegas. God knows what number. San Hagen versus Son Yadong in the main event. Uh, I'm going to be breaking down these fights. There's, there's a couple of fights on there. There's three fights that I'm looking at, basically. Damon Jackson, Pat Sabatney, uh, Chidi Unjukani, uh, Gregory Rodriguez. And, of course, the main event, Corey San Hagen versus Song Yadong. I'm going to be looking at what these guys do well, what they don't do well, well you know, where there are openings for each guy, a little bit of research. And I'm going to be placing the most terrible bet possible because that's how I like to do it. I like to keep the odds long, the stakes low, and the bet's terrible. But the research is all there. So, look, you can put on the good bets there is nothing stopping you from doing that but if you want to learn a little bit more about some of these fighters that are heading your way this saturday then stay tuned for the burt locker fights in 15 for ufc vegas sandhagen versus yadong <laughs> Right, we're going to start off in the featherweight division. That is 145 pounds. Mr. Damon Jackson, uh, 21 and 4, taking on Pat Sabatney, 17 and 3. Now, uh, this is a fairly straightforward one. I don't know a huge amount about Pat Sabatney. Otherwise, it, he is a BJJ black belt. He's got 10 submissions on his record out of those 17 wins. So you know that he likes to get a submission. He is pretty good. He is coming in as the slight favourite in this one. Now, Damon Jackson... Uh, I think he's got a slight height reach advantage, I believe. Like, I might be talking out my ass there. Let's have a quick... Let's just double check that, Bert, before we start committing to that bullshit. Oh, yeah, look at that. He's got it. Slight height and reach. And when I say slight, I mean slight, because it is a one-inch reach advantage. But he is a couple of inches taller. But, he, yeah, he's the very slightly bigger guy. Also, a huge advantage for Damon Jackson in this is he does bear a slight resemblance to Trevor from GTA 5 and that's the only reason I really remember who Damon Jackson is but he is coming off a couple of wins to be fair like, I, and I've always paid attention to his fights just because I've, he doesn't actually when you look at it right he doesn't even actually look very much like Trevor he's just got the same hairline and I think it's the same eyes he, he's got those eyes I don't know he just he looks like a fucking crazy man like I think he could I think he could have some real problems in like you know in his noggin but Either way, uh, both of these guys like a submission because, as I said, like, you know, you've got uh, Sabatney who likes to get. He's he's got a BJJ black belt, but he's only got ten submissions on his record. Where you've got Jackson, he has got a purple belt, which is lower than a black belt. Some good knowledge there for you, there, guys. Purple belt lower than a black belt, right? Colors, am I right? <laughs> and, um, yeah, so. He's, but he's got more submissions on his record. So what do you do? Like, he, Clearly, Damon Jackson might have more practical applications of his submissions in actual mixed martial arts. But he hasn't got the black belt to, uh, to back it up. So for me, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend I know a massive amount about, about these guys. I'm going to wipe my screen there because I'm spitting all over my screen. That's not good, is it? God damn it. God damn it, but this is a mess, isn't it? It's just just a mess. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, back to what I was saying. I don't, I don't know a huge amount about both, about both these guys. I do watch Jackson's fights just because he looks like Trevor out of GTA Five, and for that reason, and he's coming in as an underdog as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a bet on on Trevor. Sorry, Damon Damon Jackson. Gonna have a bet on Damon Jackson by submission just because he has 15 of them. Uh, there might be a temptation for Pat Sabatney with his BJJ black belt to turn this into a grappling contest. And practical grappling, when you include the strikes as well, is very different to traditional Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I would say that. Look, it doesn't always translate. It does a lot of the time. It doesn't always, though, because sometimes those fucking strikes can be a real difference maker. So maybe uh, Damon Jackson can make something happen with that. So next fight. Chidi Unjukani versus Gregory Rodriguez is a really interesting fight at middleweight. Unjukani, really exciting middleweight prospect. Um, I'm going to go into this on my Patreon. This is a Patreon uh, bet. So if you want to break down, rather, if you want to go and head over to the Patreon, uh, check that out. Please, uh, for your support is massively appreciated. And um, yeah, so uh, go and check that one out. Uh, so anyway, 
Then you've got the main event. Uh, Corey Sanhagen versus Song Yedong. I do not care if it's Yedong's song. Uh, I say it's Song Yedong. Uh, I'm sorry. Not sorry. You know, it's just... Look, they've always announced him as Song Yedong. So don't change it at this point. Like, don't, don't try to change me, baby. You know? Come on now. Anyway, Sanhagen, look, he was on an absolute tear, wasn't he? But then, when it starts to come to the best in the weight class, like, he's just been coming unstuck, hasn't he? He lost us to Yan, TJ, and Sterling. And, um, yeah, outside of those guys, Sanhagen's looked really scary. He's looked really straight, straight, great striking, lovely kicks. That kick that he landed on Edgar was absolutely fantastic. And, yeah, he's just... The problem is he can sometimes get outworked and get outpointed. And we've seen, we saw that against TJ, but bit, that was a very close fight. A very close fight. A war, in fact. And it was really fun. But TJ did come out on top. And PT Yan, again, came out on top. Sterling rode him like, got him, rode him like a backpack and then got the submission. So, look, San Hagen, he is, he's really good unless he comes up against like the really elite of the division now song Yid, the real question going into this one i suppose isn't it is is song Yidong at the level of your tjs your yans and your sterlings and that is a good question i don't think we've seen it yet we haven't seen it let's be fair we haven't seen him fight anybody that's at that level yet not really but let's have a look at who his best win is against because I, I couldn't really see... I, I do remember some of his fights. So Marlon Marais was a good one. That was a good one. But who hasn't knocked out Marlon Marais lately? With the greatest of respect, right? The, uh, the way that Casey Kenny was a good one. He showed a lot of power in that one. I mean, I know it was a split decision. But again, there was... Um, he's beaten Marlon Vera. We know how good Marlon Vera is. Like, he beat Marlon Vera quite handily, I thought. He just, he just had much better power and just and was just far more effective. I know that Marlon Vera was very upset about that decision, but it was, I don't know, I, I thought it, it was the right decision. And um, yeah, so look, for me, I think that Song Yadong, he's, he, look, he's still at Team Alpha Male. He's coming off a three-fight win streak. Confidence is big in the fight game. Song Yadong, he... he Goes to the body very well. His strike, his hooks to the body are extremely good. Extremely effective, very, very powerful. He's got excellent grappling as well because he's coming from that Team Alpha Male camp where he's got excellent wrestling and, and very good guillotines. They, they pride themselves on their guillotines out there. So, for me, look, the height and reach, they're basically the same. Two inches to Sanhagen. I think Sanhagen does fight long quite well and, he, and if it stays in kicking range, Sanhagen has got a really good chance. But for me, I don't know, if they get into exchanges in the boxing range with the hands, I feel like Song Yedong has got the power advantage here, especially with the hands. We've seen it too many times. And I just feel like over five rounds, Song Yedong is going to sneak a power shot in there that's going to do damage and it's going... To, I, I, I can see a body shot here. I can see a body shot dropping Sanhagen and then, you know, going in, finishing TKO. KO, TKO for Song Yedong. That was going to be what I'm going to be betting on. But looking at it, look, if it stays in kicking range, it stays at longer ranges. I think that realistically, Yedong's going to get all the way in against Sanhagen. He's got either got to be all the way in or all the way out. He's got to use his grappling, make it dirty. Whereas Sanhagen... His kickboxing is probably slightly better. He's probably got, got slightly better kicks, I would say. But I've just got a feeling that Song Yedong is going to ride this wave that he's on. He's going to get it done. And those are all my picks. So um, I'll be doing some posts. I'll, I'll post up a picture of my actual accumulator when I put it up. Because they'll, because uh, the odds aren't out yet, as I say. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, um, I'll do a recap show next week, I guess. And see how these, how these buggers end up. Until then, keep those odds long and those bets terrible.